Hey, hey, hey. It's Tammy Lowe, the Lazy Northern Gardener. I'll do like the James Preglioni coming to you live from, I think I'm in uh, Troy right now, heading down to Madison Heights to put in some plants in a very, 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 very clay soil. We thought the Ann Arbor was, was heavy clay. This is even thicker clay, so it's going to be fun, 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 fun. Um, but here's the thing. I'm not digging the holes this time. Uh, Chief is willing to do that for me, so oh, thankfully, because that was the part that I'm not, that, that kind of labor, I'm not about that so much. Um, just because it's very, it's very intensive. I know what to do. I know what, so if you're going to plant in clay, here we go. Here's your tip. You make the hole at least three inches larger on each side of the pot than what you got a pot. And then you're going to put compost in the bottom and you're going to put the plant on top. But before you put the, before you put those in, sorry, I didn't put it in step order here. Uh, score the, talking about putting plants in clay. Okay, you got to put plants in clay. So you make the, because I'm repeating it because I just saw someone's on looking at this live. So just want to say hi. All right, so you're going to make the hole at least three inches wider on either side of the pot. You're going to score the sides. So put some ridges in the sides of the clay because when you dig clay, it makes a really smooth side. It makes it like a bowl all around the edges. And it's hard for the roots to get through the sides of clay. So you put scores into the clay sides so the roots have something to grab to. You make, uh, you put some compost in the bottom and you put the plant inside and hopefully the compost elevates it at least several inches above where you normally would plant it. So if this is the top of the hole, the plant actually should be a couple inches taller coming out of the hole. After you take it out of the pot, it should be a couple inches taller than the hole. And then you're gonna surround the whole area with compost level with the plant. So that's what you do for, comp for uh, clay soil basically. And then you don't water as often at all. I mean, you're gonna do the initial watering, but you're probably gonna water about half the amount that you normally would because water in clay, it, it just kind of sits there for a long time. It takes a long time to drain. So you don't wanna over water if you've got clay. All right, but that's not even why I <laughs> went live today. I just wanted to poke my head in and say, I told you so. I told you so. Because I have said if it's 45 or lower and you've got some tender tender plants out there, either new perennials or you have annuals that like the warm temperatures. If it's 45 degrees or lower, cover them, protect them because there might be frost. Well, it was like, it got down to what, like 30, I think it was like 31 in our area. I mean, it was really, really, really cold last night. Not in the greenhouse because I do keep that heated a little bit. So it did not get that low. But, so I picked up compost. So I've got the plants back here and then I've got 10 bags of composted manure in the back. I picked the compost up at uh, Ray Wiegand's and guess what sign I saw? I saw a sign that said if it's 50 degrees, overnight or lower. Cover your plants. I feel vindicated. I told you so. And I'm going to say it again. I told you so. So, not coming from me. I've been saying 45 and lower. Cover your plants. But Ray Wiegand says 50 and lower. So you better listen to Ray Wiegand's because they know what they're talking about, right? And you don't have to, if you've got a whole bunch of animals out there, you don't necessarily have to bring them inside you could group them together and cover them as a group. So if you group them together with not a lot of air in between them, the mass inside the pots, the mass of the soil inside the pots is gonna help them keep, keep warmer than normal. It's gonna take a lot longer for them to cool off. Now, if you've got air in between them, they're gonna cool off fast. They're gonna heat up fast. But when you group them together, you maintain the thermal mass a little bit more 
And then when you put the cover over a frost cloth or a sheet over a steak or a sheet over a tomato cage, whatever it is you gotta do to support the cover, then you don't need as many covers. So keep checking those temperatures. I have no idea what it's gonna do tonight. And I've gotten to the point where I just, I have to look each evening to see what the low will be. Make sure you're looking at the correct low number. Some weather apps are reporting it weird, where um, they show the low for nighttime, like in a different, I don't know, like the day before? Or the day after? Or so, I, don't, I can't remember how, how I saw it before. But make sure you know what the lows are going to be in your area. And you know, if it says like 34, which is real close to freezing, then you might want to just be cautious about it and protect it. I mean, you don't go outside in the cold without a coat on, right? So you wouldn't expect your plants to do that. So, so I'm going to say I told you so as far as the temperatures go. But here's what I'm going to say to some of these people who are like patting themselves on the back. See, that's why I don't plant. See, I know better than that. You know what? You do you. If you don't want to take the time to have cool, cool weather crops and start enjoying nature's goodness early in the season and you want to be sick and you want to have allergies and you want to not take care of your health, hey, you know what? That's up to you. You want to keep buying all that store-bought stuff if it's there on the shelves, that's up to you. I don't care. You do what you want. But for the rest of us who do want to plant early, we're going to do it. Um, let's say uh, corn, corn. Usually, if I'm, I didn't, I'm not planting this year. But if I was planting it, I would have put the seeds in on May four, uh, May first, because that gives it plenty of time to germinate, and it has the spring rains that usually come to um, water it all in and get it going. And it even has time in case like deer come along and eat the tops off to replant. So you know what? Yes, you might have to replant your corn, but anyway, anyway, <laughs> listen, you got to do what's right for you. If you don't want to do anything until after Memorial Day, that's fine. As for me, I would rather go with like enjoy myself Memorial Day weekend, not do back breaking planting work or yard work or whatever. I want to, I want to space things out a little bit, stagger it out a little bit. So I have some time to play and I have some wiggle room. Uh, Cause I, it feels like in Michigan, our our summers are just they just go by so fast. It's like in Michigan, typically we only have we only have between Memorial Day and Labor Day, which is like a really narrow window. Which really technically, that's like tourist season. It's like Memorial Day through Labor Day, cause that's when the the state parks open and people are camping and things like that. But for gardening, you could garden forever. It's a big truck. Um, yeah, I mean, you can gar you can even garden over the winter if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to try it again this winter to overwinter things like I did. I did kale, uh, broccoli, cabbage, something else. Oh, there's a truck that's stuck. Um, so I did a bunch of things. Oh, he's not going to make it. He's going to run into that. Other nope, he made it. Um, sorry, my ADHD that's not diagnosed. So there's plenty of things that you can grow if you want to. Try it if you want to. Um, you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I told you, Ray Weekend says if it's 50, 50 or lower <laughs> to cover your plants. <laughs> I just felt so vindicated. I was like, I told you so. It's kind of like if you, if you tell your kid or your husband something, and they're like, no, that can't be true. And then they find out for someone else. Oh, did you hear so-and-so and such-and-such? And such? Yeah, like, I, just, I told you that. Didn't I say that? I told you that. So um, I'm really glad to be able to get the uh, plants in the ground because plants grow best in the ground. They do best in the ground and out of pots, even, it is, even if it is going to be clay soil. So this should be, um, this is going to be a beautiful garden when it's done. And this is just portions of it. I still have to get some white hibiscus and then there's some animals I want to put in as well and I'm gonna wait until it's warm enough that I don't have to worry about the temperatures killing them off uh, one of my clients I put snapdragons in 
And the next day she texted me and said, oh, something ate the, the snapdragons. <laughs> you know what? When you live, <laughs> when you live without fences every, anywhere and you, and you don't have a dog and it's wide open to like all wildlife, you're going to get stuff that eat them. And I, I don't know what to do. Um, what I am going to do, I'm going to draft up hard copy waivers that that hold me harmless for critters eating things or if they don't know how to water and they either didn't water or they overwatered or if they don't maintain the space and they grow up weeds or if something happens to their plants because when I put them in they're healthy and I'm going to put them in in a way that they are going to last for a, for a long time because they're healthy and I'm going to put them in the right way so um, there were some other, a couple other things. Oh, there's a client that I had put in a shrub last fall, and they said, we need this shrub moved back a foot. So that shrub, which was put, which was fine when I put it in, and where I put it in, has been growing all winter and all fall and all the spring, and they want that moved back a foot over a foot a foot one foot what's the big deal Tam well the big deal is again I planted it correctly I planted it in the best place for it when I move it if I move it back a foot well I don't want to sit there and have to move plants around because people say well you know what I don't really like this pink with this yellow over here or whatever like okay then you can move it if you like I can show you how to move it so you do the least damage that you can to it but if you paid for a design and a consultation and you paid for an installation and you signed off on it if you give me the final payment without saying I don't like it then I'm assuming I just pass it where am I oh my gosh I, gotta go here. I like went way past it um, <laughs> Then I have to assume if you if you uh, you know I have to assume that you like if you that you approve of the job. So if you want to make some changes, that's okay. It's your garden. It's your garden. But I'm not going to necessarily do the work for you if you want to make the changes afterward. So anyway, <laughs> so how to plant in clay? That's what I'm going to be doing today. And uh, I told, I've mentioned it several times about what to do for clay. The Ann Arbor job uh, was one of those. The butterfly garden we put in there. And then, uh, and uh, 50 and below, cover your plants. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. I am like punch drunk because my new job is kicking my butt. <laughs> There's so much brain power going out. I got none, I got none left. I can do the gardening. Uh, but I can't do like I can't read anything else and no more reading for today at least and then after I sleep I get rejuvenated I can go again but I'm telling you right now in this learning curve for the new job woo, baby and it's not like I don't know how to do the stuff but it's I'm like more attentive to it since I'm an auditor because yeah and because I'm training, I'm trying to pay attention to everything that they're telling me and everything, making sure I don't miss something. And and I tell you what, this new job, it also has meetings galore. Like there's so many meetings. And then there's so many people in so many different time zones. Um, it's kind of hard to keep track. And then I'm afraid like that I'm in the wrong place for the wrong meeting or I got the time wrong or something and I'm going to miss something. And then they're going to fire me. Which, not likely. It would be not likely. But in <clears throat> the former job, I rarely had any meetings to go to. And then previous jobs, we had maybe like a monthly meeting. And it wasn't, it was not often. And this one has a lot of meetings. <laughs> and today we had an hour long meeting where we were like on camera. So... Like I was videoing, getting videoed, you know, as, as we were, you know, doing the video camera. I, I haven't done a lot of Zooms either with lots of different people. So it's just a learning curve. <laughs> Everything will be fine, I'm sure. Anyway, happy Thursday evening. And uh, 
keep an eye on the weather. It gets cold, it gets warm. Just be ready. That's all you got to do. Just be ready for all kinds of different things. Uh, looks like Friday night, tomorrow night, will be lots of rain. Be ready for that. Catch the rainwater if you can in buckets. Um, or if you can get a, water, a rain barrel in, or if you can get your rain barrels out of storage, get those ready to collect, collect your water. Um, and also go out and look at your yard and see what happens when it rains. See if it flows a certain way that you, where you want it to go somewhere else. Uh, make sure your plants aren't getting floated away. Those kinds of things. So anyway, Tammy Lowe, the lazy northern gardener. You know what? I'm working my tail off. My tail's still there. I don't know what's going on, but maybe it's my sweetest jeans. I don't know. Anyway, guys, love ya. Catch you later. Bye.